Hello everybody and welcome to episode 9 of the Bossbring Kingdom campaign let's play for Imperator Rome, the 1.2 Cicero Beta. Now we left off in the last episode after we were helping our ally Colchis in their defensive war against Armenia. They are also being helped by their ally Iberia and it seems like Iberia and Colchis took a little bit of territory from Armenia and now Albania are pushing into Armenia, Barber and Comagen are pushing in. The giant is being picked apart by a bunch of scavengers and it looks like they're going to fall apart. As well as that, we also got attacked by Tirgate. Now, this was a direct attack. It wasn't an ally attack. And our ally, Macedon, came to our aid and helped us take them out. And we managed to take out pretty much everything they have except one little territory here at Sakidava. Probably pronouncing it wrong, but you get the idea. Now, something that I need to address is that, unfortunately, I made the mistake for the first time in this Let's Play of not saving the game when I was done. So... It meant that I, it autosaves every year on the 1st of January, but it meant that I lost six months progress. So I had to re-finish the war. Now everything played out almost the exact same. All the events triggered the same with the governors and everything else. Everything is intact, don't worry. But the only difference is that we're three weeks behind where we actually ended the war. This fort didn't fall as quickly. It took an extra month to fall and that set me back basically a couple weeks before I could get the same peace deal. So everything else is the same. But apologies for that. So if you see some inconsistency there, like if you notice that the armies might be in a slightly different place, I guess, or the date is different, that's really the only thing that's different. I made sure I went through, um, I went through the footage and then the actual save to make sure like the same events did trigger and everything was the same. So it's all good. Um, so yeah, so now in this episode today, we're going to be solving our internal problems now that have arisen from these multiple wars that we've had. We've been very low on manpower because of these wars. And as you can see, we've just got a ton of different alerts and things going wrong and right up here that we need to kind of address and fix. So I don't think we're going to do too much expansion, but I've got an idea for some way we can expand in this episode to kind of, well, I'll get to it. But for now, we're just going to go through these things one by one. Then we're going to re reorganize the armies, move them around, sort everything out. And uh, yeah, but essentially, as I said in the last episode, I was really happy with how things went. You know, grabbing this huge patch of coastline here was awesome. I haven't looked at any of it yet. I need to check the populations there. I'm guessing they're going to be like Decean in culture or something like that. All right. So the first issue we have is civil war is going to be breaking out in 41 months. Now, this is interesting. We've got a very disloyal governor, Callistratus Nicket. He's the governor of Olbia, this man right here. Now, I made a mistake, again. <laughs> he already had a lot of holdings, but I gave him a holding to buy some time for loyalty. Now, I, I, know, I know that giving, loyal, uh, giving holdings grants more power, but I don't think I guessed how much power this guy really is getting. His governorship size, oh, I know what happened. Because we got the rest of the province. Yeah, that's what happened. Because we got the rest of the province. This, suddenly, this guy's power counts for a lot more. So he's now at 65 power base. Governorship size is going to be 15. And then his five holdings is giving him 50. So that's a lot of power. He's actually one of the most powerful characters in our game currently. And he's the reason for the Civil War. Because he's basically the most powerful character. And he's, like, disloyal. So he's causing a lot of upset relative to the power of all the other characters. So because of that, we need to figure out something we can do with him. So... He's just hit the point where he dipped below that 33% loyalty threshold, which means now he's considered disloyal. So we got to figure out what can we do with him, right? So he's our friend <laughs> uh, of the king at the moment. There's really not much else I could do with him. I was thinking like, oh, maybe we could, um, maybe we could throw him in jail somehow, give him a trial, something like that. But he's too powerful. He's literally too powerful to even have a chance of any success in the trial. So we just can't do it. Uh, if you go over 40 power base, you just cannot be bringing this person to trial. So we have to figure out, we've let it get too, we've let it get too bad and um, we need to figure it out. So I think the first step is just to get him out of power, out of this governorship here, right? If we take him away from the governorship, he'll reduce his governorship size by 15. Then he'll go down to being just 50 power base. So that will buy us a little bit of time. And I'll probably bribe him to get him out of there. Now, bribing him means I'm going to be giving him money. And the more money he has, the more power he will gain over time. It's way less than way slower. But it would be an easier way, I think, to get rid of him. Get him out of there for now. He's only 50 years old. I remember thinking before, I thought he might have been 60. I think I looked at it wrong. Because I remember thinking, oh, he's not going to be there for that much longer. You know, he'll be a bit of a thorn in the side. But ultimately, he will just, you know, die before he really causes any issues. 
A man this powerful can raise an army, so we really do need to figure out what to do with them. So let's, I think this is the right course of action, I don't know, but we're gonna try it out anyway. We're gonna bribe him. We're just gonna give him corruption, we'll give our guy corruption as well, our, our leader, Philip. So he's now loyal enough where we can actually get rid of him as a governor. All right, we're gonna change governor and put someone else in here for now. Simeus Zenonid. Okay. So, we've gotten rid of him. We have disloyal characters now. Yeah, because taking him off the job, I think, lowered his loyalty. I don't think it said that, but it has. Ah, now look at this. Well, that's really weird. His holdings only count for 8.92 now. That's really weird. I didn't expect that at all. So his holdings don't count for anything if he's not the governor? Hmm. Well, I mean, this has kind of worked out because essentially he's now gaining loyalty because his power base is so low. That seems like that, that's wrong. I don't know. I'm not sure about that. That's This is the thing that always comes up in this game for me. It's like, yeah, things are really interesting. It seems like it's a tough problem to solve. And then by some happenstance, you click one button and it fixes everything. And it really bugs me when that happens. I was hoping that, well, I was assuming, right, that he was going to remain... He was going to keep his holdings and keep gathering the wealth and become a more problem down the line, but we'd solved an issue for now. But it looks like we fixed it. If he's not going to be... If he's gaining loyalty now and his lo his holdings don't really count for anything, he's not a problem at all. He's got a decent amount of wealth, but it doesn't seem to be contributing to the power base nearly anything. So that's kind of a shame, you know? I think that was kind of an interesting problem to solve. I was looking at it at the start of the campaign. And I was like, oh yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do about that. And well, there you go. So hopefully they can work on that because that is that is not good in my opinion on how to fix that. Um, but for our campaign's sake, at least the problem is solved. Uh, we could put him in a governorship roll down again. I'm not going to do that. We have Philon Spartacid, and he okay yeah we could put him down here. Why not? So he's going to be the governorship of uh, the province of Thrace or Scythia in Thrace. So if we have a look here at the regions. So he's going to be the governor of Thrace. We've got governors everywhere else now. So we have a hand in one, two, three, four, five, six different regions. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Okay, so we solved that problem. The disloyal character, that's going to go away because he's going to essentially just promote, or his loyalty is just going to rise up in the next couple of months. So that's, we can get rid of that. Our research ratio is really bad, which does suck. Can't really do much about it other than wait to convert pops and focus internally on doing that. Uh, lack of commander. Yeah, so we split our armies a while ago. Uh, this army is off on its own. This one is super damaged. That's the cavalry. Kasaki's cavalry is damaged. Okay, so this one is going to go down here, merge back up with him. Might send them on the boats. Actually, I'll probably send Leo Stratus on the boats back over here. Because I'm worried all the time about getting attacked out in this little sliver of territory. So I think it would be good to have Leo out there. Or, well, actually, that he could get kill killed or captured if we... Did get attacked by a bigger force, so maybe not. But we'll bring him back to the capital. I think we have full supply. Yeah, we do. So we can just walk it. He can walk it home. March home, I should say. The navy. We'll dock the navy for now. I'm going to dock the navy south. There we go. Cool. So that's that. Uh, exiled army. So that's Kasaki's cavalry. We'll send them back up to Tafros as well. Pretender support, scorned families. Okay, so that's pretty much everything we got to worry about. And then we have room for inventions if we need to. So I think where I'm thinking of expanding in this episode is I had a look just in between episodes of the different loyalties of governors because I was thinking maybe we can, you know, Phrygia are such a big player in the game, so to speak, that going to war with them would be pretty much suicide, right? We, say, we saw in the last episode that they've got 154,000 men, okay? active they're not missing they're only missing a thousand from the army so they're they've got a fully stocked ready to go army they seem really intact they're not having any uh you know chance of rebellions or anything like that they got five thousand pops they got nearly 400 cities they are thick they don't seem to be going anywhere anytime soon actually let's check are they at war they're not even at war so that's a that's a really big threat that's like the biggest threat in the game really right now to everybody not just to me maybe maybe barring moria um, but it's really interesting because they survived their secession. So now a collapse could still happen at some point. You know, there's a lot of different mixed cultures in here and it can be hard to solidify all that. But for now, they seem fine. Um, but if they overstretch the mark, maybe, maybe we have a chance of 
capitalizing on them breaking apart. So what I was looking at in between episodes, like I was saying, was maybe I could persuade a governor if they were disloyal enough to uh, swap sides. So what I saw was Bithynia is really what we want, right? We want Bithynia, this region here, because it's the coastline. We want to solidify the Black Sea, the Pontic Exunus. Um, but he's way too loyal and he's quite young. He's only 25. So this guy's not going to become disloyal anytime soon. And his loyalty is actually gaining. However, I did notice that there's a lot of governors here that seem very disloyal. We have this guy in particular. He's at 35 loyalty. So he's on the cusp of being disloyal. And then as well as that, once he gets disloyal, he can't, they can't take him out of the position. So if he goes below 33, he is ripe for, I guess, manipulating, right? So we could think about that. However... I mean, there'd be a huge gain. We'd gain all of Asia. It's really crazy if you get a governor into the position where you can entice them. You've got the money or whatever you need to do it. I can't even remember exactly what you need. I think previously you used to need money and oratory power. But now with the new political influence, I'm not sure what we actually need. We'll have to check that. But essentially, we would grab all this territory, which is cool and all. I mean, it's very lucrative territories probably. But it's not really the objective of our campaign. So we'll keep an eye on it. It's a very real possibility of doing that. But for now, I think what I'm probably going to do is try to do that to Macedon. Because Macedon are actually my ally. And they have a governor here who only has 42 loyalty. And he's decreasing each month as well. Um, because of his power base. So if he gets down, if we make friends with him, um, and we inspire some disloyalty in him, then that's going to go down quicker and quicker. And if we can get it to the point where it goes below 33... And then I think it has to go even further down, below 25. We can maybe entice him. Once it's below 33, I'm like, boom. He is in that position. He's not going to be taken out unless they bribe him out, out of there. Uh, which they could do. Which I think they did before, actually. So it, it, this might not work, but it's always good to have it going on in the background just in case, you know? Um, so that's, that's what we're going to be doing in this episode. Really just trying to stay defensive, solidifying our borders, building up that manpower, and then maybe seeing if we can entice some governors in a certain way. So what we need to do is have a look here. We have our ruler, Philippus. He's getting older. He's, his health is deteriorating, but he's going to be here for a while. We're going to stop inspiring disloyalty. We're inspiring disloyalty in this guy, Simeus, who comes from Phrygia. I'm pretty tempting. It's pretty tempting to recruit him. He's a level 11 finesse, so he'd be a great governor. Uh, he's not doing anything, he doesn't have a job, he's just a friend of the Basilis of us, uh, of Bosporian Kingdom, and he's the head of the Artisodemid family. Um, so, you know, he used to be a governor, but they took him away from that, because obviously he was low loyalty and stuff, he's zero loyalty right now, which is crazy. Um, so they're never going to put him in a position, that'd be crazy. But we could recruit him, and he'd become loyal, and he could work for us, and that'd be kind of nice, but like I said... We get a little bit extra aggressive expansion. That's not good, right? We're up already up on 30. Being up on 30 means that these guys are going to be a lot less loyal to us. So we just got to kind of bring that down and, yeah, kind of play the waiting game a little bit. So it might be a bit of a slower episode in that regard, but it's going to be focusing internal and building up. And then maybe we'll even get to see the next line of secession where Philip might die and then we'll have his daughter Olympia take the reins. And, of course, her husband, Leo Stratos. Um, so yeah, so that's where we're at. So let's let time play. We'll just keep it on normal speed because I feel like I've forgotten some things, but we'll just leave it on normal speed, let everything sort itself out. Um, okay, he seems to have made a recovery. I didn't know what was wrong with him, but there you go. <clears throat> so yeah, so, oh yeah, I remember now. Um, we wanted to change this guy, Menace Karsid. So he is reducing the aggressive expansion. He's doing an okay job at it, but we want it to be more, right? So we have Orestes Zenonid. He'll reduce it by 0 0.09. And then it's currently going down by 0 0.21. So it takes five months to lower it by one point. And for every point, it's like one direct loyalty, pretty much, with the um, tribal vassals that we have. All right, so... We're currently also improving the opinion of Sarmatia and Heniokia, which are our, our, our tribal vassals. So we'll see how that goes. We have a decent amount of money coming in. Are we paying the armies? We are. Let's stop doing that. Let's stop doing that. Let's stop doing that. So now we should start making a lot of money, right? 17. And we can start reinvesting into trying to get that freeman um, efficiency up. So I think out here, I might found some cities or something. Or move the capital or something. Just to have some places with training camps and things like that. A lot more freemen. Focus on freemen a bit more than... Because here's the deal. I'm tripping over myself again. We have 46% of our population are made with slaves. We just have way too many. 
because we gathered so much from our previous wars. And some people were saying that um, they thought that maybe aggressive expansion came from taking slaves. Not the what, not from what I can see. We, if I go, I went back through the episodes and it didn't seem to be the case. So that didn't seem to really affect it. Our aggressive expansion came from the 20 that we got from assassinating our daughter and then 10 from the various territories and things we got in our recent wars. Uh, we were fighting defensive wars, so we didn't instigate them, which can often give you, it often means that you don't spend as much aggressive, aggressive expansion as well. Um, so yeah, so that's the situation. What can we do here? Patronize the arts, primary culture happiness, like something like that might be something we might think about doing. Demand oaths of allegiance, summon the war council. A lot of people want me to summon the war council. I might do that after this, um, at the end of this episode, or maybe at the beginning of the next one. Um, it basically it tends to give you a claim on something. Uh, okay, cool. So that's where we're at, basically. Uh, hopefully that gives you a good solid recap of everything that's happened so far. Now what I wanted to look at is, is this power base really low? Yeah, that's so strange, isn't it? Let me know what you think in the comments about that. Like, I really do feel like his holdings became less value. So that must mean that him having a job or him being a governor actually behind the scenes, behind what the tooltip is telling me, gave him a percentage modifier on how important having holdings or whatever else might be. Because his holdings were 50. It said 10 for each holding. Now, I wonder, is that because where they, was he a, like, are they, were they in the actual region? Teneus, Nikonion, Torikos. Let's just have a quick look at that. No, they're not even all, they weren't even all here. So I was thinking maybe because he was the governor. Oh, well, it's based on, it's based on region, isn't it? So maybe they were up here. No, I don't think so. So I was kind of thinking maybe because he's the governor as well of his own holdings that maybe that just increases the power, but it didn't seem like it. So where is Teneus? Yeah, really far away. So he, he had no hand in that. So that, they were all contributing 10. That just seems weird. I, would, I don't know why. Wonder is it a bug or, or what the deal is there? Uh, this army is sucking down the food from this place, I think. From unit attrition in the province, negative 484. It doesn't seem to be bothering it though, it's still growing food, so maybe we could just leave them. Although it says you're gonna lose 484 men to attrition. I mean, they're the only ones that could be taking attrition, so it must be... Whoa, his loyalty has just spiraled down even further. I don't know how that happened. Man, I'm so confused. We bribed him up to 50 loyalty. We took his job away, he went down to 30. Now he's on 12. Like, what have I missed? <laughs> what the hell has happened there? Strange. I don't know. We could just throw him in prison. <laughs> Take the tyranny hit and just leave him where he is. Let him rot. It's kind of tempting to do it. He hasn't done anything wrong. He's just not loyal. We'll see. I'll keep him. I'll keep my eye on him for now. Uh, okay, so apparently these guys are taking attrition. So that's why I don't get that icon. I thought people said that means you're just taking food away, but they are dying because the population we're losing manpower. So I think it says uh, gain 345 each month, and we'll lose 484 from attrition. So got to move them somewhere that they're not going to be taking that. Let's head down to Istros. All right, I'll speed things up now, but that was a pretty long, like long intro before we really got into the game, but I hope people don't mind. Ah, you know what actually as well is speaking of trade, we have trade offers here. So we can import two different things here. Um, food is kind of fine. I really want to build a fort down here as well because we got no defenses. Let's see what we can get. Earthenware, so Freeman output. Yeah, that's actually really great for what I, oh no, that's only if you get a surplus in the capital, my bad. All right, we'll get livestock. No, that's just, we already have it. Damn, <laughs> I wish it would do something where it would like highlight what do I already have so you can just kind of see at a glance, you know, what you want. We can only get four different things, so let's just get something for now just to get the money flowing. So that's that place sorted. 
We still have Orbia. I don't understand how Orbia has like no goods in it right now. How could it only have one, two, three, four, five, six things? I don't know. I don't I don't care. I don't have time to look at that. Um Move slaves cost reduce livestock. Let's just get something for now. How can I have so little? Like every single region produces something. Maybe I'm just trading it all away, I guess. I must be. I don't know. No, it couldn't be. It's only if you have a surplus. Oh yeah, so we just have a lot of the same thing. Oh, that's why. So we have three wild game and three step horses. Oh, that makes sense then. That makes a bit of sense. Three fish, three salt. Okay, fair enough. Cool. Anything for the inventions? Tribes of unhappiness? How many tribes do we have? 202. Um, and from the Sia Transmaris, Transmaris guys. Yep. Okay. Trade influx. Our trade agreement with Kerosus has yielded a splendid return on investment. Along with the flow of, the we of wealth between our two states, the movement of people is accelerating. So a Bosporan citizen appears in Clementia. Where is Clementia? Yeah, it's fine. I still feel like those events don't really make any sense anymore. Um, where does it say the cost of this? 37. Oh, yeah. Go for it. All right, that'll increase the stability back up a bit. Right, we're not taking attrition anymore. We're lacking 7,000 um, manpower, but it's, it's, it's gaining, so that's good. So let's see what we have in this province. Where's the place with the most pops? Here. So the most free men is in Torica, which we have the governor policy to get more manpower out of them right now, which is good. The next one then would be here, which we're currently decentralizing. So I think we can stop doing that. We could probably do the same here. And the same, the same here. So that should help our manpower for a while. Maeotia is trying to civilize itself right now. So what is that on? Oh, it's fully, okay. So that should be converting any excess tribes that we have as well, which there's still quite a bit. So yeah, we'll leave that. So what is it doing? 11% that one tribesman prop will convert. Yeah, that's pretty good. So where is the most tribesman? There's 71 in Scythia. So let's do the civilization effort down here. Yeah, Scythia is down here. So a lot of tribesmen here, we want to kind of clean them up, shave their beards, wipe their asses. And that should help promote them. Now the capital, weirdly, doesn't have, isn't like, you know, um, it's not a city, it's just a province. What is this? Oh my god. A bastard returns. Despite our efforts to hush up the affair. Oh, I remember this. So, much like his father, Philippus also had it away with another woman and had a baby. And we said, make this go away. We didn't kill the kid. We didn't embrace him either. But we said, let's pay for him to have a good life and let him go. The existence of the bastard child, Lycurgus, now grown up babe, has arrived at court requesting an audience with the king. It seems that it seems the servants trusted with conducting our orders were either unable to follow through or failed through. Sorry, we're, uh, one, we're unable to follow through or failed to maintain the secret of the child's parenthood. They will be dealt with accordingly. As for the child, we can no longer avoid his third court. His account has the support of eyewitnesses and we can only acknowledge or deny his claims. Now, what's really interesting about this guy is he is actually... He's of the family Kasuke. Now, we know Kasuke. Let's see how these guys relate. Oh, um, that's so cool. His name is the Sarmatian. He got a cognomen. I didn't even give him a triumph. I don't know how he er earned that for himself. Probably just really great military campaigns. So what's the deal? This is the Kasuke family. Although this is another Kasuke, but they're not the same. So maybe it's just not the same. So what is he? So this guy is uncaring, stubborn, cruel, deceitful, and he's got, currently got an inflammation. He's 19, he's got 2658, he's particularly good with zeal. 
acknowledge the child's providence, which would mean that the consort will lose loyalty to us, right? She doesn't like that. Our wife is like, I can't believe it. He'll gain loyalty, though, the kid, and he'll be adopted by the Spartacid family. Close family members and pretenders of Philippus will lose 40 loyalty. The Bosporian kingdom loses 30 of Gypsy. So this is interesting because our, our guy obviously has no sons, right? He's got daughters. And if we take on Lycurgos, well, then you can kiss Leostratus goodbye for getting the place. So we have to. We have to deny the allegations and see what happens. He's got, this kid's going to lose 40 loyalty. Now, who is he? I mean, he doesn't have any power. So let's see what happens. Maybe he'll raise an army to his name. I don't know. Deny this. I don't know who that kid is. He looks nothing like me. We'll see what happens. That's a really interesting... That just came out of left field, you know? It's pretty interesting. We still can't do the colonizations here because we haven't gotten our full culture going yet. Which is actually kind of annoying. So what can we do to increase the culture here? So there's 67 Hellenistic pops in the province. 35 Getian and then some Scythian. And this is like really... Oh, sorry. These are different provinces. Oh, sorry. I was very loud on the mic there. Um, these are actually different provinces. My bad. So yeah. So this province then in total has 57 Scythian pops. Okay. Hmm. So let's... Do we even have a city here is the question. There's 15 pops here, but this isn't even a city. I think we need to found a city if we're ever going to convert these guys and try to colonize. Colonization, like, people were like, oh, you should colonize the north, you know? It's, it seems really difficult. Like, I'm still learning as I go with this, but the problem is you need 50%, at least 50% of the pops to be dominant. Then you need at least 10. Then you can spread just one region over. And then you got to go through the whole process again. But now, since you can't automatically or, or manually just convert everyone you have to like wait over time to convert them and the way you, that that's a very slow process so you can do as much as you want to speed that up but it just still takes a very long time if we look at the pops here you know it's, it goes up by one percent how much we convert it goes up by 0.06 percent like that's a lot of months just to convert the culture of one um pop you know now it'll go faster and faster if we build buildings to kind of help it along but to do that, then what we need to do is found a city, build some buildings that will allow the conversion process to go a bit faster, and then it will start working, you know? And then what we also need to do is pull all the pops, as many as we can, into the one place so they convert quicker, and then spread them back out. That's kind of what we were doing at Tafros. We had the centralized um, policy on, which meant that we were pulling all the pops towards this area as best as we could with migration. We've turned that off now, although some are still migrating in. And then once you've got them, you can, you, if you want, you can spread them back out. If you want to help, then start colonizing out this way. Because, yeah, like none of these areas, even after all this time, none of these areas have the culture we need to spread out. We're 100% Scythian in this area here. We find, That's crazy, actually. 100% Scythian. That's going so slowly. I would also go slow based on unrest. And we have a lot of ag aggressive expansion. Um... Yeah, so unrest is slowing it down by 8.57. Okay, so yeah, that's another reason. <laughs> it's interesting. I, I enjoy it. It's just when people are saying to do it, it's like, wow, it takes a very long time. It takes a lot of money to invest into doing it. And I just don't see the reward being worth it. There's not many pops up there, you know? There's just not many pops up there. Um, now, how's the diplomatic situation? This is something I keep overlooking. We can sort, sort by neighbors. So Serasia really don't like us, obviously. I'm just going to try and improve their opinion, and hopefully they'll just leave me be. I just don't want another war just constantly picking away at my um, manpower all the time. Then we have Getia don't like me a lot. All right. They're bordering me now as well. We really do need to invest in these forts then. So let's, let's begin that. Hmm. This seems like a good place for one. It's a farming settlement right now, so I'm going to remove that. Okay, so a fort there. That's a that's a pretty good spot. 
And then another one like here, I think would be nice. Oh, there is one on Istros, yeah. Maybe one here then. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, these are slightly open, but whatever. Change this one to one as well. Okay, so that's a, a series of new forts. They take a long time. They take like three years, so... It takes a while to get them built. We might get attacked before we're ready for that. What are they like right now? They've only got 26 cohorts. they got 14,000 manpower. Okay. And the armies are almost back to full strength. It's just Kasaki's cavalry now that need a bit more. I'm struggling to bring that manpower number up. It's going really slowly. Rome. Requesting to import vegetables. Taking the boot down here. I can't remember if they had that last episode or not. Oh, crap. Look at this. They've taken territory over here. That's interesting. Can we see exactly what they have? So this is what Rome... The green are Rome. That's, yeah, it's cool. I guess they just made a little venture out over here. Carthage doing very well as well. Alright. I'm going to speed it up even more. We're going to go full 5 speed right now. So we are just waiting for... This is a... Yeah. Alright, well, if... Manpower is the problem, let's see what we can do. So we enacted all that Torica, right? So if we have a look at... Where is the most... Freemen? There's two free city buildings on, in this place. So maybe we'll build two training camps. Local manpower, 10%. I'm not looking to increase the amount of free men I have. I'm just looking to get more out of the ones we do have. There's a training camp here as well. There's a training camp here. Yeah, I've already kind of built them. So, I don't know. National citizen output. That'd be pretty good. We're actually finally catching up on the technologies, as you can see, because we're um, getting through them here. make the tribes when we have happier as well. If we're raising up happiness, it'll just help with converting as well, so that's kind of the way you got to think about it. Hostile siege is on us. Oh, right. I didn't even see that. Um, yeah, Kasuki can go up and deal with them, right? The cavalry? Yeah, he should be fine. Oh, wait, we're not paying for him. <laughs> Whoops. Just wait until he gains some more morale. There we go. I've got our next omen. I think, again... I don't know. 0 0.04 is really not that much. So I think I'll still go with, I'll go with the Freeman again. The Freeman happiness. We're 76% religiously unified. Pretty good, actually, considering the amount of different cultures and stuff we have. All right, Barbarians defeated. They didn't do anything, which is good. They managed to hit our forts, which is um, something I didn't really think about. But we do need another fort, like, along here. Probably one around here or something as well. Just to slow them down when they come in, make sure they get hit by something. Actually, it'd be better positioned here, I think. This is a river. That's the northern wall. Good. Hey, manpower is starting to go up now. It's a beautiful thing. And now it says we're gaining 444 each month. So it's slightly more than it said before. From Pops 410, from Subjects 34. Great. So that's good. Every two months we make a thousand, right? So that's not bad at all, actually. Really, considering our size. Oh my god, Armen Armenia now being attacked by Phrygia. The Fridge are getting thick. So, yeah, let's start doing that governor thing that I was talking about. Kind of forgot to do it. Uh, this governor is actually... He's losing loyalty pretty quick. Really quick, actually. But... How old is he? He's 60. How's his health? He's plotting quietly as well. Interesting. And they've managed to bring all their loyalty up as well. It's like they know what I was talking about. Alright, let's, um, let's just invest in this guy. Why not? So we'll... 
we'll stop ending. We'll, we'll end foreign disloyalty on that guy because he's not even. He's not even in power, and we'll do it with this guy instead. Ooh, five aggressive expansion though. Huh. No, I can't do it then. I'll have to leave it. I'll make friends with him though. That helps him become disloyal as well. He's already becoming disloyal pretty quickly. If we keep an eye on him, maybe it'll work out. Give him a large amount of gold. Cool, we're up to 2,000 manpower. Um, several nights ago, Anade Varuka was discovered helping himself to a sizable quantity of gold. I think he took like 16 or something, did he? He took 50. Um, so yeah, chide him publicly, he'll... We lose... No, we'll do this one. He'll lose health, and we'll gain popularity. The Gladiator. Um... Your ruler will make a moderate amount of progress. We lose five popularity. Send the man to serve his personal bodyguard. Yeah, we've we've read this before. That's why I don't want to read it again. So, <clears throat> making an impression, a gift, five stability or fifteen political influence. We'll do the influence one. Forts are almost done. At least some of them. The Olympic Games. Oh, we could send Leo Stratus again. I'm gonna do that. Let's send him again. Let's see what happens. He won when he was just 18 years old. Can he win again? He's like 30 years old now. Okay, cool. We became friends with this guy, which is good. Which means if we wanted to inspire disloyalty, we can. If we want to entice, his loyalty needs to be less than 25. He might fall down to that naturally. He's at negative 0.15. So you never know. But he's just a bit old, which is the kind of issue. He's not sick, though. I'm just eager to see what happens now with Leo. Oh crap! Our consort has died. Rip. So our marshal has fallen considerably. And our zeal. The man is nothing without his wife. Is he in mourning? Nah, he doesn't care. Well, we'll leave it. He's he's old enough. It's obviously better to have him married some to someone, but I just, I don't know. It brings with it so many headaches a lot of the times. So I think I'll just leave it. Because how much time does he really have left? Oh, his health is actually going up. God damn it. He's 68 though. Surely at some point soon. Anyway, the Olympic Games concluded. Um, the highlight of the year was the games during the f uh, during the final race of the Olympiad. The whatever in which the comp competitors enjoyed a full lap of the stadium and clad in full body armor. Molon of Epidaurus. Crossed the finishing line a good hour after the race began, having stopped to flirt outrageously with a group of giggling maidens. Okay, so our guy didn't do didn't do anything there. Bit of a shame. He was obviously rigged. <laughs> Where is he? This is gonna be like last time. I guess he doesn't come back for a little while. Yeah, I'm sure he'll be back soon. Or I've missed him again. Um, you know what? Let's try to marry someone then who's just, if they're just old. Hopefully it won't cause any issues. Let's find someone who's around his age. How? She's 31% health, 90% health for this person. Seven and five. The five is better. Santa Baruca. We'll go with her. Crisis Kausika. She's got the gout. But whatever. She's slightly better than not having her, you know? Yeah, she, she she just contributes to zeal. Nothing crazy, but it'll keep him calm. <laughs> keep him happy. Alright. Um, let's see. 50 loyalty. Okay, he's dipping. 0.22 per month, so 5 months, he loses 1. So he loses two per year, and he's 62. Yeah, I don't know. We need to speed that up with disloyalty if we want it to do anything, but it's just, it's not going to happen. Cool, we advanced a little bit. A new military tradition. Enable slave raid. 
So slave raid, I think, is the thing that actually costs aggressive expansion. But we'll do that anyway. Enslavement efficiency 20%. Not sure what that means. Is it like the chance to get one or something? Like the efficiency is 20%. But okay, we'll... Slave raid. Is that a navy thing? Yeah. Slave raid. Um, the navy can raid up to three adjacent ports for slaves if they are protected by fewer than three fort levels and have a population above five. It would have the following effect. Same thing. Performing a naval raid will cause one aggressive expansion point and an additional one point per raided port up to three. So yeah, you can hit three ports in one slave raid. Interesting. So you can just take back slaves from the coast. We could do that all along here if we ever go to war with Phrygia. Imagine that, actually. Oh, well, Phrygia probably have a huge navy, but you could raid the crap out of them if you didn't care about the aggressive expansion because we wouldn't be really looking for territory if we got attacked. Olympia Spartacid requests responsibility. The heir to the Bosporan Kingdom, Olympia Spartacid, has asked to take on some of the responsibilities of rulership from Philippus. Though young, Olympia Spartacid is confident that she has the necessary capabilities to be an effective administrator. Uh, let's give her a chance. Now, let's see. So he is back. Let's put him back on the army. So Leo is back on the army. He didn't lose any traits or anything, so that's fine. He still has his t holdings and all of that. He's investing in opportunities. So some people also pointed out that because she has, um, or she had Ment Mentagra, that she has a lower chance of having children, but that's gone now. We did cure her. So they should start getting cracking. He's 34, she's 29. They've been married for a while and they haven't had kids yet, so I don't know. He doesn't have any traits to, you know, indicate that... They can't have kids. Oh, we have a navy, an enemy navy up there. Hmm, they're actually within my own thing. Interesting. If that, yeah, I can actually sit in my own port. Okay, on top of the navy, on top of the pirate fleet. Aggressive expansion impact negative 5%. How's the manpower now? 455 per month. Good. We're up to nearly 10,000. So we're, we're doing pretty good. We start, it's going to be time now to think about who we want to go for. So these guys are protected by Getia and Moesia. Um, these guys here, Transmariska. Because they're the, obviously the next in line. And then there's like Macedon and so on. Macedon will probably help us in that war. Yeah. Cole just won't though. Why not? Low manpower, military access. Okay, that's fair enough. Oh god, these would be joined by a lot of people actually. Thrace, Tir well, Tirgite, really not an issue. Thrace, Moesia, Getia, and Crobesia. So these are really small, almost like city states now. And we could mop up. We could take pretty much all of this because this is all Moesia. This is like a nice big province that we could get in one war if we were to try and do that. That will be something we do, but it probably won't be till the next episode. I'm sorry that this has been a bit of a slower episode. It's just, you gotta wait sometimes. Um, she adapts to leadership, beautiful. She's taken on some of the responsibilities of, of the state from Philip and has performed remarkably well. She shows promise in both statecraft and diplomacy that will serve her well when it comes her time to rule. Awesome, so she's getting a little uh, more popularity right off the bat. How's our dad? Yeah, he's still, he's not over yet. <laughs> he's hanging in there. Our son, for now, seems to have, we seem to have gotten rid of him, no problem. This guy is gambling all his money away. Ah, uh, I remember her. It's so sad when you see mother and it's like younger than, younger than the son. <clears throat> Right, so what else? Should we be looking to think about Serassia as a tribal vassal as well, maybe? What would they- they don't have any allies. That is tempting as hell. 43,000 manpower, though. But that would be a really good tribal vassal. A lot of pops there, though. Not an easy one to control. 
Touched by Hermes. Panat Capion has seen a huge influx of traders and travelers from far and wide recently. We'll be inspired by the god and make the most out of this. We can make a bunch of money, or we can say no and get national tax, 5% omen duration increased, as well as local tax there. Um, yeah, that's actually pretty good. Although we lose money for doing it. Yeah, let's do that. I think we'll make more over in the long run. Demand tribute, tr demand tribal vassal. They don't want to do that, so... Could fabricate a claim, go to war, and see if we can grab them. Um, they'd be just so valuable to have. Well, they wouldn't be that valuable. It would just be help the manpower again. But we don't need to do it. We could just focus on the mission at hand, which is this one. It's just these seem like they'll be a harder group to fight. Although, I, you know what? These guys hate me so much that I feel like if we attack them, these guys will just go to war with me anyway. So I probably will stay focused out on this side. He's going to rotate the cavalry down south. Leo Stratus as well. We're going to bring him down here. Several trade um, requests. So we'll do it with Phrygia. I want to keep them happy. Okay. We might end up raising another army up here if we have problems. It's kind of cool. It seems like Damnonia have been the, are kind of like the more dominant, but Icenia, Icenia are kind of linking up with themselves over here. So they're doing pretty well as well. We have the Sequania doing pretty good, Nidabrigia and Lusonia. And the kind of more dominant powers that are emerging. Cotinia are like huge. What do they got? 700 pops, 71 territories. They've done very, very well for themselves. They're in two war wars at the moment with the Erevasia and Ersuniatia. Well. How's this guy doing? He's down to 45 now. Our stability is all the way up to 60. Our aggressive expansion is going down pretty nicely. We have pirates, though. Damn. It's going to hit us negative 10% commerce in what's going to be pretty much our capital. So what's the deal, actually? We were looking to... Yeah, so we're... Oh, my God. oh no, this is this is the one we need to see. Ooh, we're really close, actually. One or two more pops, and then we can make this our capital, I think. Oh, we can do it now. It says dominant culture is Bosporan, but it's not, though, is it? It's 49.12. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think we're pretty much ready to do that. Relocate the capital. Cool. That was one of our kind of side objectives that we wanted to do for a while, was move the capital to Tafros. It's kind of nice. And that'll actually increase, I think, the um, migration attraction. Oh, yeah. Of course, that means we have to redo all our trade routes. Or a lot of them. So we want grain for the pop growth. Maybe something like... Interestingly now, this is the capital and we're trading a lot of stuff away from it. So what we'll have to do is stop trading things away. So we need to go to the trade screen. We need to go um, origin. What's this place called? This is Bosporanum, right? So we need to stop. Stop one of the step horses. Um, so livestock and salt. This is such so tedious because it can't have both screens open. So livestock. So fish, step horses, and salt. So fish, step horses, and salt. Fish. We already have step horses, we already have, and salt. So we don't have that for salt, so let's cancel one of the trades for salt. Cool. So I don't think we're 
sending anything out of Bosporanum anymore, which is good. Just these two things, but that's okay. We already have the surplus. So now, yeah, we've just got a few extra capital surpluses there. <clears throat> so what else we could get is something like maybe the olives. Or no, I was thinking wine. Do we have wine? Grain? Earthenware? Earthenware would be great. That's going to give us national freeman output 2.5%. That's a great one. And last thing, maybe, let's see what's available. Olives, vegetables, and grain. I mean, there's not much to go on here, so we'll just go with olives, I suppose. Cool. So that's going to help our freeman a little bit. 445, 2.5% technically, so that's good. This might be the first episode where we just didn't take any territory. I think almost every episode we've always taken something. Who knows? We might go into a war soon. Um... What is this guy on? He's on 44. So, military restructuring. Theodorus Tripiscar, of the Tripiscus first, has initiated a wide-ranging restructuring of the offices under his command. He assures us that he will. this will allow for more efficient command. Um, let's see, we place our trust in him, he'll gain extra loyalty and more morale, but is he may become more ambitious. He's 71. Yeah, that's all right. Um, brother of the governor of Colchis, he was a member of the Pythid family. Okay. The Hierophant. Oh, it's our son. He is the son of the Basilis of the Bosporan Kingdom. He's the head of the Sarasi Kasaki family. He's the head of the Sarasi Kasaki family. What does that mean? He's not part of like some other kingdom, is he? We can hire him, so I'm guessing not. Let me just check in here. Does it say children? So even though he's a, this is another one of these event things. Like even though he's my son. He's not listed there, so we'll have to go males. He was about 19 or 20, so there he is. Well, he is boss born. The Kasagi family have the following members. So his... So in his family, he's got members of a family from another country. Interesting. I don't think I've ever seen that happen. I don't know if he's listed in this. Like the Kasaki family is here, but that's the other one. It's not the one he's in. So yeah, weird. It's like, that's a really weird crossover kind of thing going on there. Sort by size. Yeah, I mean, he's not there. Although, is he in the Spartacid family, no? Because he's the son. I don't see him. I don't think so. That's weird. Hmm. How very interesting that we have a character that's basically... has ties to another faction completely. And it looks like it's the flag for these guys, Serasia, right? So... I guess that's who he kind of mingled with at the time. That's when he had sex or when he had an affair. Is he disloyal? Scorned family? Well, let's give him a job. Let's give him a job. I don't mind that. I'm sure maybe some of you might be like, no, you don't give him any power. I don't know. Maybe, but let's see what, it, let's see what happens. Like flirting with danger. <laughs> let's pop him in there. Um, all right, see how he does. All right, speed it up more. Armenia haven't actually collapsed as quick, like, uh, what? Albania were the ones that took over all their territory and Armenia actually won? That seems crazy to me. I don't know how they managed that. It seems like our king has gout, the time might be now. So it looks like Serasia are actually invading Iberia. And Colchis. That's an interesting war. Iberian Colchis are now at war with Serasia. 
So I could line up and jump in there and see if we can make them a tribal vassal. I am so tempted to do that. I am so tempted to do that. <laughs> oh, we don't have the claim though. Did we ever get the claim? Never got the claim. I'm gonna get a claim. We'll see how this pans out. I feel like they'll lose against Colchis though. Colchis and Iberia seem to be quite powerful. But that would just mean that everyone I border on the right would be vassaled, vassalized, which would be pretty cool. Uh, incendiary slave speaks in Cimercion or Cimercion, Cimer, Cimerican, Cimerican. Uh, a hot-headed slave with a talent for oration by the name of Nyagrote has been stirring up his fellow bondsmen in the city of Chimer. The local authorities have so far managed to keep the situation under control, but the brazen fool continues to hold forth on the corruption and unfairness of the political system, with Philippus receiving honorable mentions. The slave population of the entire province of Torica, uh oh, that's actually quite a large slave population, has not by now heard of his exploits, and the city elites and slave owners are demanding immediate action to ensure that the status quo is not disturbed further, and any slave rebellion is crushed once, uh, before it can be allowed to ferment. So round up the troublemaker and his supporters and crucify them. Divide the group and deal with the leader. This guy could be useful. A silver tongue character by the name of Niagrat Baruka will appear. Vassarin Kingdom loses 10 influence. We lose a little bit of popularity as well. I kind of like that. Oh, I have no idea what is... Well, we can sort by name, right? <clears throat> it began with N. There he is. So he's silver-tongued, which gives him a little extra charisma. Former slave, primary air attraction, negative 50. <laughs> Force conversion. Oh, I'm good. Uh, he's not as good as I hoped. I thought if he was kind of, you know, decent at oratory, you could pop him in for the aggressive expansion. I thought he'd be like really good at like negative 10 or something. But nah, he'll just sit there, whatever. So we have this person. Our, our wife is disloyal. She's getting a little bit more loyal though over time, which is nice. Uh, we can give him more time. I'm so loud sometimes. Barbarians. Dun -dun. Let's get the cavalry. Let's run north. Alright, so, yeah, we'll take these guys out. These dudes are standing on the borders. Troubling me. Who is this? Iphicrates Zeninit. He was the son of the consort. Succumb to lunacy. Just drilling the armies to get a little bit of extra experience. I should really be doing that anyway. Um, not only just before wars, just, just to also get some extra military experience so we can get more traditions and things like that. Right, so our omen is worn off. I want to see what our manpower goes down to at the end of the month. Yeah, 394. So we basically get about 60 extra manpower when we enable that. Which I think is still pretty good. I still just don't see anything else being better than that. The research, maybe. I'm gonna get it again. We're up to 800 gold now. We've got so much. Oh, yeah, by the way, some people were saying... This is really at the end of the episode here now. But some people were asking about the pris prisoners that we have from Armenia, right? So we have characters that are imprisoned. We've only got one now. We had three. They're probably dying of old age. And they're saying, why not sell them back to Armenia? It's up to Armenia, I have since learned, to ask me for them. I cannot sell them. So it's up to Armenia to ask, but apparently the AI never does. Um, which is such a shame, because I was looking at this guy, and the cool thing about this guy is his dad... Well, I don't know if it's this one, actually, but... Maybe... Yeah, it's not this guy, but anyway, it doesn't really matter. But I was I was just thinking that we have characters that were imprisoned. Sometimes they come from good families. 
you know, it's it's a, it's a shame that there's no system where like the AI does offer you money for people that are actually like either high family prestige or if they're young and have good skills, things like that. But they don't seem to care. So there's really no benefit to even like just to having. It's just such a stupid system. It works great in multiplayer because obviously human players are willing to trade for the characters they want. But yeah. Like this guy's not that. I'll just release him. Be free to go. Maybe Armenia will like me for it. Probably not, but it'd be cool if they did. Cool. So, um, <clears throat> we have uh, Anten Antenor Pythid. He's given negative ten to the aggressive expansion now, which is pretty nice. And then we have Orestes Zenonid, negative eighteen percent sacrifice to the gods cost. So we have a researcher available now. Theophrastus, Sparta Kid. Right, and our technology is advancing nicely. These guys have gotten quite big. Um, Buridavencia. Getty is getting much smaller, which is nice. So, yeah, I think that's what we're probably going to do in the next episode, is just wage a war. And we have to start fabricating a claim, actually. It's probably fabricate here. Is start waging a war on Gete, Transmarska, Moesia, Kroboisia, and Tirgete. So essentially, what we'll be going for is the province of Transmarska, or the province of Krobzoya. Krobizia. I don't know. Krobizia? This place. Kroby. So yeah, that's probably where we're going to go for next. Um, but yeah, sorry, this one's been a bit slow. I mean, I've enjoyed it. I always just feel like, oh, I don't know, but you always need to be taking something or doing some war for it to be interesting. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it either way. And I'll be back pretty soon with the next episode, every two days. All right, thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.